now time to review some of the headlines of today's newspapers from around the world. Over to you, Dr. Adesua. <laughs> I love that. I love that. I love that. I love that. Perhaps this may just be the year. Yeah. Yes. Perhaps yes. No yes. Why not? It's doable. It's doable. achievable. Thank you know, you. Dr. Batia, my mentor, you inspire me a lot. So you have brought another prophecy out. <laughs> okay, it's a prophetic declaration. It's a prophetic okay. declaration. All right. Thank you very much. As expected, the National Dailies are reporting uh, President Muhammad Buhari's New Year's speech, but let's see how they are reporting it, starting with the newspaper of records this day. And it leads with Buhari, we won't shirk responsibility to protect lives, property of Nigerians, Vows to overhaul security apparatus, says 2020 tested national resilience, ability to survive tough times. Jonathan, Lawan, governors, Ayoku, others preach hope and unity. Above the nameplates, federal government selects 161 firms for marginal oil fields final bid round. Uh, how's the punch reporting this morning? Uh, it says... Uh, Federal government will ensure speedy determination of corruption cases, says Buhari from that speech. But the bold headline is rising COVID-19 cases. NUT cautions federal government against January 18 school's resumption date. Teachers will stay at home if infection increases, uh, says Teachers Union. Prepare for more COVID-19 patients in need of oxygen, NMA tells the federal government. Uh, the nation says Buhari, government to reorganize security apparatus, personnel. President promises secure future for youth in New Year Day broadcast. Uh, Nigeria's debt hit 32.223 trillion naira, says DMO, as uh, weapons being ferried into Nigeria on camels. That's according to the ACF. The Vanguard is reporting that our achievement not sufficient, according to President Mohammed Buhari, promises to reorganize security apparatus, assures youths of fulfilling NSA's demand. It also has uh, the Vanguard personality of the year 2020 on the front page. But uh, other stories, 20, uh, Buhari signs 2021 budget of 13.588 trillion Naira Finance Act. And uh, the Daily Trust says, Buhari, we will work to restore hope. Uh, Brexit, what you need to know about the UK leaving the EU, it's also today. Uh, we killed 2,403 Boko Haram bandits, others in 2020, says the Nigerian military. But the boldest headline with pictorial uh, uh, information is 2021, experts worry over low IGR states budget 8.3 trillion naira. Daily Independent says Buhari hints at overhauling armed forces. Police says hashtag NSAS port is highly regrettable. Acknowledges 2020 was a tough year. Vows to reinforce hopes of Nigerians this year. The Guardian, in 2021, we shall tackle insecurity, economy, corruption, says Buhari. Atiku blames woes on lazy, uninspiring leadership. Governors promise different packages to mitigate hardship. UN calls for global peace cooperation. We will pass petroleum, other bills to boost economy. Lawan declares and Saraki urges all to unite towards finding solution. Uh, the New Telegraph this morning also reporting the president's speech. Buhari uh, will re reorganize security apparatus, diversify economy, President to MDAs, meet IGRO targets or get sanctioned. Nigeria's total debt stock rises to 32.223 trillion naira as Jonathan Atikulawan Baja set agenda. Governors, let's keep hope alive. Kalu 2021, I will be prosperous. And of course, Nigerian Stock Exchange gains 8.09 trillion naira in 2020. Finally, the Daily Sun says Buhari Mall's rejigger security architecture in 2021. Says security, economy, anti-corruption remains priorities to address five hashtag NSARS demands. These right. are many more let me, on front pages. Let me first comment on the signing of the budget by the president. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that is um, commendable. It's, uh, you know, a good uh, development. Uh, you recall that for about 20 years, uh, from 1999 to 2019, you know, the signing of the budget was always an issue. Uh, it was always, you know, characterized by tension, conflict uh, between the legislature and the uh, executive arm of government. In 2018, for example, the uh, budget was not signed until June 2018. 
And in 2019, the budget was also signed late. But from 2020, from the 2020 budget, we have seen an attempt by the Buhari administration to correct that error of uh, 20 years uh, by ensuring that the 2020 budget was signed uh, December 17, uh, 20, uh, 2019. And then this year again, uh, the budget was also signed by the president before the new year. And this is in conformity with the Fiscal Responsibility Act. There's a law called Fiscal Responsibility Act of 2007, which was put together with cooperation, you know, in, in collaboration with the World Bank and all of that. And what that law says in one of the sections is that a budget should be signed, you know, and align it with the year, you know, that that budget relates to. The budget and cycle. so for two years now, we have seen the Buhari administration being able to respect uh, that section of the law. The advantage of it is that it gives certainty. It builds investor confidence. It allows people to be able to plan. Because when there is this back and forth between the National Assembly and the executive over the appropriation uh, bill, mm -hmm. then, of course, you know, everybody is uh, you know, just yeah. in a quandary. Mm -hmm. And there's so much uncertainty within the system. So in terms of achievement, I think that that is something to be commended. But if you look at the details, of the budget that the president signed. Although he has put some caveat there. He says he will study the 500 billion mm. that the National Assembly added to it. And if he has any objections, we will go back uh, to the uh, National Assembly. But of course, you see this National Assembly uh, declared very early that anything that the president wants in the best interest of Nigeria, they will do it. Mm. So another demonstration that we have seen is the fact of you know, synergy Exactly. between the executive and the legislature. But in terms of the old issues, all those old issues are still there. Debt servicing is over three trillion. Uh, capital expenditure is just over four, four, four trillion. Mm. Recurrent expenditure is about five point something, four trillion. Mm. So you see, the old problem has still not gone away. Now, for the 2020 budget, the president says that uh, budget performance is uh, 97 Point 0.7%. Well, I hope at some point somebody will give us the details because budget performance is always a problem, particularly with the envelope system uh, that they've been adopting under this uh, uh, administration. And then, of course, they, there isn't systematic execution of budget. So that in itself is a problem. And then do we regularly review budget performance? Mm. We have a National Economic Council. Mm. Part of the responsibility of that National Economic Council should be periodic review mm. of budget performance, and that should be communicated to the public so that civil society can have uh, an input. And then the big problem, which uh, uh, Rutus alluded to, the problem of revenue, mm. Mm. a budget that is dependent on uh, oil revenue majorly, mm -hmm. and then in a year when there's still that uncertainty about the effect of COVID-19. Mm. So we, I'm not as optimistic as government is, but I think in terms of aligning the process and sustaining the January-December uh, cycle for the second year running, I think that's okay. Now, as for the uh, COVID-19, the uh, Nigerian Union of Teachers spoke mm. through the Secretary General, and the NUT is saying that if by January 18 that the federal government says schools should reopen, if the numbers continue to increase, we, we are now recording 1,000 infection cases yes. mm. on a, on a day, almost daily basis yes. that the NUT will not show up in the mm. classrooms. The NMA said they had warned that it was the reopening of schools for YEC and regularly, you know, that resulted in the spike in, in numbers. Mm -hmm. The National Academy of Science, through its uh, president also, has said, look, we have to be careful, we have to be vigilant, we should not rush to reopen uh, schools. schools. So what remains is for government to listen mm -hmm. and to provide the necessary infrastructure. Even in Lagos, we're told that oxygen supply is a problem. Mm -hmm. And when you present your case rather late, then, of course, you will need oxygen. Yeah. So there's also some advice for people there. You know, mm. if you see that you have symptoms, then immediately, you know, uh, report to yeah. the relevant uh, authorities. Yeah. And I hope government will listen to all these uh, strategic institutions where you have experts, people yeah. who should know yeah. how COVID-19 pandemic and the infection rate in Nigeria relates to their own interests. I mean, I mean a great one you said, uh, Dr. Abati, and uh, great insight about, I mean, you asked all the very pertinent questions uh, Dr. Bati, I don't know, maybe by doing this show, we all read each other's mind. <laughs> because those were the pertinent questions I, I would love to ask in my mind. But I just want to go one step further, and I want to talk about the revenue challenge. Yes. 
Because constantly, when you look at the economic indices, now DMO was saying today that we've got about 32 trillion uh, debt stock and the likes, about $80 billion in debt stock and things like that. The problem, yes, debt service rose up in Q1 2020 to about 91% of our revenue. It has always been because of the revenue challenge we have. And what is government looking very strongly at doing to ensure that we can use the MDAs and things like that to be able to drive revenue? Apart from taxes, custom duties, and the like, government should be looking at better ways of driving revenues across board in the country. And by doing that, then you need to exponentially increase that creativity level and look for new revenue sources in the economy, create new economies. I was really looking forward to when uh, the Ministry of uh, Communication was changed to digital economy, that we're going to drive major revenue from that economy. But I've not seen a lot of that you know, trickle down on the budget. And that's a big way you know, to be able to drive revenue. Because the problem, when you look at it, what we are collecting is not just enough. Uh, custom duty pretty much not changed. In fact, I was trying to do like a comparative analysis. In 1980, Nigeria had uh, collected about 1.2 billion naira mm -hmm. in customs. Now it's about uh, 2.4 trillion. If you adjust for inflation and you know the currency valuation and things like that, 1.2 as at 1980 that is like parallel to the dollar times. That's about 720 billion. And compared to about the two point something trillion we collect now. So when you look at that and try to put it in percentage form. Revenue collection for customs, for instance, have not tripled over 50 or 60 percent. Well, so, I think so, about the revenue challenge. So that, that's still far-reaching. So it's, for me, it's about looking for better sources. Yeah, taxes. Let's not expect that taxes will increase. It's a year that we're fighting a recession. Obviously, in a recession, taxes definitely will reduce yeah. and the likes. So we need to start looking at other sources. Like what would be we, the quick silver mm -hmm. bullet? I like is how it we'll agriculture focus or what is it going indeed. to be? Indeed. I like Rush. how we focus on the national budget and then not so much attention is paid to the state's you know, budget because they also have a fiscal responsibility to their, oh, uh, yes. to their citizens. Yeah. There's too about, much attention at the central. But it's about the revenue challenge. I think one of the things that we need to be done is for the federal government to be resolute in sanctioning ministries, departments, and agencies that do not make appropriate returns into the national policy. Yeah. That's a very big problem within the Nigerian system, leakages. Yes. Previous governments have tried to deal with it, but there are ministries, departments, and agencies of government that find a way of sidestepping, yeah. sidetracking uh, the former channels. And then again, maybe we have to worry about wastages. Yeah. Yes. The cost of maintaining government is too high. high. I mean, just look at it. And that explains why a recurrent expenditure is so high. Yeah. And statutory transfers are also, you know, increasing yeah. over the years. So, but the bigger focus of the government is tax. They're yeah. talking about tax. But even then, we don't have an efficient tax management system. Mm. Yeah. And secondly, they are also talking about diversifying the economy. Yes. Now, there's talk about, uh, you know, uh, revenue from the non-oil sector. Um, that grew uh, for some years, but compared to the needs, the developmental needs of Nigeria, a lot will still need to be done in that, uh, in that axis. But with COVID mm. and all the other challenges that we have, you mm. know, you find at the I, end of the day what we're I, 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 given is excuses. I just I quickly want to make a case for what you talked about, which yeah. is very important, state budgets. And when you look at it critically, most of the states I saw that passed their budget had a threshold of over two or three hundred billion. And uh, only Lagos was the outlier with close to over a trillion. The question has always been... Well, Ogun State too. Ogun mm -hmm. State too. The question has always been, uh, what, how can you increase IGR? Yes. And how can you make it effectively to run those states? And that should be the challenge for the states in the new year. Mm -hmm. And also, let's look at their debt stock. Lagos leads yes. the pack with over 400 billion in debt stock, right?